In this video tutorial, we will look at the manual process of generating a whistle document with the help of IntelliJ. This is a popular IDE that you can download online. Once again, this is just a high level introduction. For a detailed overview, please refer to the online W3C SOAP specification. Another fact to mention is that Spring Web Services will generate the whistle document for us automatically. Now we will look at the main XML elements which makes up an insurance application. First, we have the applicant here. This XML element contains social security number, first name, middle name, last name. Second, we have the uh, widget information. This is the information on uh, the widget that the applicant wants to insure with our company. Uh, this XML element contains the widget cost amount and the invoice number of the widget. This is, of course, the invoice number that the applicant bought from the widget company. Or well, let's say this is the invoice number from the widget company. Third, we have the insurance information XML element. Here we have the line of insurance product the applicant wants to buy from us, our insurance company and uh, what type of coverage the applicant wants to buy for her widget and of course what coverage options she selected. Now finally, we will package all of this together in a single insurance application document that the widget company will send to us over HTTP. Here we pause again to mention this is a whittle down example of what will be an extremely detailed and legally binding document for insurance and that of course the real XML will have to conform to the SOAP specification as laid out in the whistle document. Here we have the uh, insurance application.xml document that we created in our previous series of slides. Uh, it's uh, inside IntelliJ. So now what we're going to do is right click, select generate XSD schema from XML file. We're going to be selecting the design type of local elements slash global complex type. Just hit OK. And there we have our auto generated insurance application.xsd. Now we're going to need to clean this up a little bit. So let's just align the top elements. And uh, Let's see, if we look at what it has generated, we've got the top uh, or the root in incoming element of an insurance application. As we can see, this is an empty tag. So we need to populate it with the actual definition of the insurance application type, which we get down here. So here we're just going to do a cut and paste, Control X, Control V, and now we can do some cleanup of this XML element attribute types up here. We don't need these. And we also don't need the name of the insurance application type. So this is our basic XML document definition, which is the uh, data definition of the XML file. 
that's uh, generated for us and we've cleaned it up a bit. Something else we can do at this stage is look at uh, one of these elements. Say we want to add some validation to our XML and here we have a specific element for social security number. Now what we can do here is we can actually in the top part of the document define the validation and this is what our validation would look like. Now of course we can have to change our element type down here to refer to this type which would look like this and uh, you see some red showing up which mean that uh, we still need to do some editing in our schema attributes in this case we need to define the XML namespace for our preamble, which I'll add up here. That should fix it. And there we have it. We have a kind of a rule definition of the insurance application coming in. And we have defined one simple restriction based pattern string here for the social security number simply says uh, three digits followed by a dash followed by two digits followed by another three digits with the range here of zero to nine and that's it this is what we are going to use to build our whistle okay now that we've finished Creating the insureindication.xsd, uh, we are ready to start working on the whistle. So the first thing we're going to do is create an empty whistle document. Just right click, select new file, we call it insurance application dot whistle. We start our whistle with the standard root outline and attributes and in order to separate the schema from the definitions we will use a separate namespace for the whistle definitions. It's defined up here. Next we import the schema as defined in the data contract so we can see that we are referring to our schema location here and now that we know that we can go and enlarge our display here. Next up we define the insurance application message which gets used in a port type and the insurance application type is defined in this schema. Now we define the insurance application port types which in turn is going to get used in the binding. You can see the whistle operation in insurance and the input is the insurance application. Here we define the insurance application binding which get used in the port. We use a specific document literal style over here and this is to specify that we are using SOAP over HTTP and inside the whistle operation of insurance the SOAP action attributes signifies the SOAP action HTTP header that will be sent in every request. This literal signifies an HTTP transport over SOAP, SOAP transport. The SOAP action attribute signifies the SOAP action HTTP header that will be sent with every request. Finally, we define the insurance application service. So we can see and this is the endpoint that we're going to call with the API. It's going to be localhost insurance application address where we can invoke the whistle web service. And that is it. That is our basic 
whistle outline document.